Did you know that the hit song Peaches by Presidents of the United States of America was written all because of a random trip to a Seattle bus stop? Or that lyrics to one of the band's biggest hits were inspired by a time lead singer Chris Ballou took acid? What about the music video that MTV refused to play because it was too dark and disturbing? Stick around as we answer these questions and more on 10 Things You Didn't Know About the Presidents of the United States of America's Self-Titled Album. Number 1. Five Strings The band perform with just five strings on their guitar. No, I don't mean the guitarist simply removed a string and called himself Keith Richards. I mean they collectively play with just five strings among both guitars. Chris Ballou on what he calls the two-string bass guitar, and Dave Diderer on the three-string git bass. As Chris Ballou told the Chicago Tribune in 1996, between Dave and I, we have five strings, and you can make the most complicated chord in the world with five strings. We just have to cooperate with each other. Chris would later go on to tell Noise Trade in 2013, by now, I am so used to playing two-string instruments that I don't remember the headspace I had when I wrote on regular instruments. It just seems completely natural now. In fact, I wonder why people don't actually just learn on a two-string or three-string. It's so much easier. I have also come to learn about the origins of rock and roll music and the African banjo. The idea of using fewer strings connects what we do back in time to the roots of rock and roll in Africa. Chicken on, so the cock and roll. Hey, hey. When chicken on, on the cock and roll. Mama, hey, when... Number two, anti-grunge. The band intentionally wrote humorous material to brighten up the mood of the rock scene, which was dominated by moody grunge acts like Nirvana and Pearl Jam. As Balu explains, I've been making silly music my whole life. I've also been making serious music as well. I have a lot of different colors in my paint box, but I do remember a distinct feeling that the scene needed to be lightened up a little bit. And so it felt like it was time to bring out my silly stuff and see if it would be well received in that environment. I do remember watching the MTV Music Awards in 1992 or 1993 and thinking that the scene needed a little bit of a smile. Number three, inspired by the Buzzcocks. The president's hit song, Lump, was partially inspired by the Buzzcocks. As singer Chris Ballou explains, in the beginning it was me trying to write a Buzzcocks song. I guess I still channel them a little bit whenever I play it. Number four, Energizer Presidents. They keep going and going and going. Okay, young people probably have no idea what I'm talking about here, but Chris Ballou and Dave Diderer never get tired of performing the band's breakthrough hit, Lump. Chris Ballou told a Noise Trade interviewer, No matter how many times we play it, and we have played it almost every single show we've ever played, it is as fresh and alive as if I just wrote it that afternoon. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm never bored playing that song. And as Git bassist Dave Diderer told fans on Reddit, never got tired of the song especially Lump. Every night is different. Every stage is different. Every crowd is different. Number five, dark and disturbing. MTV refused to play the original music video for Lump because it was allegedly considered too dark and disturbing. I definitely think that calling the content of the music video disturbing is a bit of a Karen move. However, I will also admit that redoing the video with brighter and more colorful imagery was probably a good thing. The iconic imagery of the band performing in a boggy marsh to open the video definitely sticks out well in my mind some 20 years later. Perhaps Dark and Disturbing was MTV's way of saying, Go back and make us a better video, ya schmucks. I'm sad alone in a boggy marsh. Number 6. The Nine Tumor Speaking of dark and disturbing, Lump was partially inspired by a benign tumor in frontman Chris Ballou's head. The rest of the song was improvised. As the man himself explains, I just make the stuff up. That's the magic of writing songs. You don't really have to explain. Number 7. True Cat Stories The quirky hit song Kitty which was originally titled Kitty at My Foot, was based on a true story. 
or about as true as a story involving a person wanting to pet a cat could be anyways. When asked by a fan on Reddit if the song was a true story, Dave Diderer said, As far as I know, yes. A bad little cat that lived in some apartment Chris shared with some folks in Boston, I believe. There's something funny here, boy? No. no, no. Well, then why are you laughing, Mr. Larry Johnson? All right, meow, where were we? I'm sorry, are you saying meow? My scene. Kitty, you gonna spend the night. Fuck you, kitty, you gonna spend the night. Fuck you, kitty, you gonna spend the night. That thing had nine lives. She just spent them all. <laughs> Woo! Number eight, burp. Peaches on LSD. The band's hit song, Peaches, was inspired by two separate incidents. The first includes a time when Chris Ballou waited under a peach tree at his girlfriend's house while on acid. As he told American Songwriter in 2022, So, the whole song started with me taking LSD and going to a girl's house to tell her that I liked her while on LSD. Which is a really great idea. Or it seemed like a good idea at the time. I went to the door and knocked on the door. So I thought, well, I'll just wait for her. And I sat under her peach tree. There were peaches that had fallen that were in various stages of decay. And of course, in my state of mind that I was in, I just started diving in and squeezing the peaches and mixing it with my desire for the girl and the desire for the peaches and juicy weirdness and ants crawling all around. But she never showed up, so I left. But the song didn't really come to life until much later. All the peaches. What else is in the teachers of peaches? I kind of like to imagine the scene from the Shawshank Redemption where Andy Dufresne is talking to Red and he says to him, If you ever get out of here, Red, there's a place out in the countryside next to a long rock wall. And inside that rock wall, you'll find a container that has no earthly business being there. And inside that container, Red, you'll find a sheet of paper cut into tiny little squares. I want you to put one of those squares on your tongue, Red, and you can sit there under the tree and eat all the peaches. And remember that hope is a beautiful thing. Hope can set a man free. Did you know that I do all of the editing for these videos by myself? Yep, that's right, me, one person including research, script writing, voiceovers, thumbnails, video editing, promotion. It's a lot of work and requires a full-time job for one person to handle, which I don't mind doing because I love being able to express my humor while also talking about the music that I enjoy. However, it would also be great to have some help improving my content, and that's where I need your help. The easiest way to support this channel is to click the like button. This will help the video get shown to more people. A better way to support this channel is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This will help you get notified when we release new videos each week. And if you really want to make a big difference, check the description of this video for more ways that you can help this channel grow and support the creation of new content. If you like what we're doing, show us some love and let us know that you're out there. And let us know in the comments what your favorite album is. Perhaps we'll talk about it in a future video. Thank you all so much for your continued love and support. Number 9. Peaches at the Bus Stop in addition to Chris's experience on LSD, the band's hit song Peaches was also inspired by a happenstance moment at the bus stop. As he explains, I had moved back to Seattle. I was waiting for a bus and a disheveled man in an oily overcoat with a big beard, who I assumed was, you know, homeless, came shuffling by the bus stop and saying under his breath, I'm moving to the country, gonna eat a lot of peaches. Moving to the country, gonna eat a lot of peaches. Over and over as he passed by. If I wasn't waiting for that bus on that day, or he didn't walk by saying that, that song wouldn't exist, I don't think. It's crazy how things can line up or not line up. Who knows what songs don't exist because of whatever didn't happen. Moving to the country, I'm gonna eat a lot of peaches. Number 10, two songs in one. Although the lyrics for Peaches was heavily inspired by Balu's experiences, the song as a whole was a product of teamwork. As Chris told American Songwriter, 
The other twist of the song was all I had was verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then Dave Diderer, the guitar player for the Presidents, came in and wrote the outro part. So it really is kind of two songs welded together, and it kind of sounds like that because we virtually stop and start a new rhythm for the outro. So I love the song for that reason, because it's a really great representation of me and Dave as co-writers of a song, and the song became one of our big songs. Biggest, really. So it was nice to have both of us involved in something that became so synonymous with the band. You know, it really is nice when you can have two artists come together to create something new. Kind of like this. So you think your kung fu's pretty good, huh? I want to fight your brother. Him against me. Let's kung fu!